Our second speaker has over 15 years of experience in the field of user-centered design and technology. Over the years, she has worked with various development teams, startups, and consultant firms as a lead UX consultant. Her projects varied from propelling startups to building digital strategies for SMEs and larger enterprises. She also mentors startups and professionals on how to apply proper UX practices. When she first quit her job five years ago, she did it so she could have more time to be an actress. Little did she know, this hobby helped her even more in her current career path. Now, she is a senior lead UX UI designer at Oliver Rylan. Welcome everyone, Laura Tihani. Hi everyone. Um, thank you, Yulia. I'm gonna just share my presentation. Okay. So, um, uh, so thank you, Yulia, for the intro. So today's topic, um, uh, what, what I want to discuss is designing customer journeys in fintech with um, with empathy. Um, and I chose fintech because you know where I mean, 2020 changed a lot of our spending behaviors and made people more frustrated when it comes to finances and especially banks as well and digital um, fintechs. They're they're trying to adapt to this change um, as well and. Um, and I want to tackle the fintech industry. It can work again. It can work on any industry, but my my, my focus is more on the empathy part. And if you want to think, I mean, I want you to think of um, you know the way we think people make decisions is that you know people sit and do an FL statement and um, and analysis before they actually make a decision. And that's what we expect people to do. And that's why we try to flush with all the features and all the, the things that try to cross sell things to them or sell things to them. While in reality, the humans, and we are much more simpler than that. And in, in theory, and actually, if we have a positive emotion towards something, it's when we are able to make a better decision. And this applies to B2C and it applies to B2B. Yes, we do do sometimes some benchmark, but it's more, mainly snap decisions and faster decisions um, about how a product made us feel uh, at, the, at the end. And I want you to just, you know, um, look back at some of the products you've used and you've experienced. And, you know, sometimes you download the mobile app and you see yourself removing it within five minutes. It just made you frustrated. Even though this product can give you what you want, but the way you experienced this product made you feel overwhelmed or you know you need to like a guidebook to know how to use it and you know that that's how usually we decide and sometimes we, we love something and we don't know why so it made us feel better about the, but about ourselves and if one of the think of the wheel of emotions this is what people feel when at every milestone of a product and this is what you can trigger in your product um in every uh, every step of the way uh, sometimes you want to focus, and again, no, no client or no customer is there to do everything at the same time. Uh, so they can experience these at different instances while they're using your, your product. Um, and if you want to think about what empathy is, so empathy is how when you feel with someone in real life and how we deal with, it, with other humans, it's how we deal, how we feel with, with people. And, you know, it's not complicated. It's just a natural human response when you put yourself in someone else's shoe. Um, and the trick is you need to get out of your own head, change a bit of perspective and put yourself in someone else's shoe. Um, because in the end, what you, I mean, we are like 73 people in this room, we're very different. We experience things differently. We're living in different cultures, different contexts. And the way to understand what your customer is going through, you need to be able to, to, to do that. It's not rocket science. It needs practice. It needs to be, you need to be able to talk to your customer and understand them as much as possible. And there's a spectrum of empathy, you know, based on how much effort and engagement you want to put, how much effort and how much, um, I mean, engagement you expect. It can start from pity, you know, this, the, the, the way that, you know, you, you say to someone, I'm sorry for you, and just you move on with your life. Or sympathy, you know, I feel for you, you give it a bit of thought, but still you move on with your life. You know, empathy, it's when you feel with someone and you're just there with them, you know, and that's when people will feel that they're developing a relationship with a product because 
you they feel that you you are part of their life and not just some some customer to them and you want to take it to the next level you can go with compassion it definitely needs more effort but it actually leads to more um, engagement and with the pandemic you know, new frustrations and worries surfaced, especially when it comes to finances. So you have this university student who's now stressed about paying for his tuition when his, his paying job is no longer um, uh, in the hospitality industry, is no longer giving him what he needs. Or you have this um, uh, uh, woman who's, a, who's employed and she's worried about using, losing her jobs. And before, when she used to be more flexible about payments and finances, now she needs to manage her expenses. And you have this older person who now they're telling her at the bank that you need to do everything online. And for her, technology is just a black box that she doesn't want to deal with. And, you know, all of these people can be using the same product. You know, how do we figure out how to target them, how to talk, how to make their experience better? Um, and, you know, if you want to think of fintech and, and the, the, the spectrum of, of products in the, in the finance industry, and with social distancing, it made a tremendous surge in all of these digital channels. Uh, you have more contactless, contactless banking. People don't want to deal with products they, for, 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 for better um, uh, health. They, there's P2P lending. People are stressed about their finances. They need to be able to get like a quick uh, uh, lending or fast payments, digital wallets, cy more cybersecurity with the growth of financial services, open banking for banks to be able to enable other fintechs to contact, connect to them and come up with large um, solutions. And of course, self-service industry, more self-service solutions for customers. And of course, there are so many solutions. So in all of the spectrum, you know, you feel like there's so much happening in this industry. Um, and why do we do, I mean, Ting Ting explained the, the customer journey mapping and um, uh, uh, it helps with, 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 uh, with also going forward with what I'm going to explain. So when we're designing customer journey mapping, there are two approaches we usually consider. We either think of the as is, so what is happening today, and we try to map it as, as it is, and then think of see how we can improve it. This could be for a new product that's mapping, like taking an existing product and enhancing it, or if your product is in the market and you want to see how to, how to enhance it with changing behavior. Uh, and there's the future state where you sit and dream of the ideal scenario, you know, and this is where you try to be innovative, come up with things that are uh, amazing. Um, and they're both good, but each of them lacks some of the things. So if you only think of the, the as a state, you're, the margin of an innovation is much lower because you're trying to adapt to what's existing. And if you think of only the future state, um, the problem is that when it comes to banking, there's a lot of issues regarding regulation and compliance, and technology is not always able to adapt to what we need, especially with, you know, you're dealing with money, you're dealing with things that you cannot make a mistake about, so the challenges are much bigger. And what I always recommend is a hybrid approach. So, you know, you create, you think of the, 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 the future scenario, but you use where people are, which is human behavior, where they are today, what they struggle with, how do we enhance it? Um, and you include them both in a more, um, uh, more detailed customer journey. And, you know, these are, if you want to think of, you know, what are the stages of customer journeys um, that in any product, this applies to any product, but the examples are going to be more in FinTech. So any products, you have four stages. You have acquisition, four main stages if you want. Acquisition, conversion, reten retention, and churn. And in acquisition, we think of discovery and evaluate. How do people discover my product, learn about it? How do we, what do they need to evaluate if they want to use my product or not? Then they go into purchase. It could be if it's a mobile app, also downloading the app. Then the adoption, meaning they said in their mind, you know, I'm trying this. Um, then the usage, uh, partnering that means that they're relying on you. So there's the first use that they used you. And always, I like to focus, the first experience has to always be different. Um, and then re like recurrent use, how do you keep engaging with your customers so that they refer you to others? And one important journey is that the journey step that a lot of people overlook, which is leave. You need to always think of what can make my customer leave. If we don't think about it, it doesn't mean it doesn't happen. But it's very important for us to, to try to understand um, uh, the reason. It could be sometimes that they no longer really need your product, or sometimes it could be they had a bad experience. So try to build it 
and, and cater for it in the journey as well. And if you want to think, I also like to divide. So these are the milestones of the journey for every product. They could be a bit different, but also I, I like to divide them into three pillars. One, which is the customer pillar. Try to think of what's happening with the customer, where, what are they, why are they here and what do they want to achieve? And this is more on the as is where they, where they currently are. And then how should the product help my customer achieve their goals and feel about themselves? So it's on the product side. So there are the steps in the journey that are focused on the product. And finally, there are steps in the journey that are focused on the operation. So what should I change in my operation? In my maybe team, I need the, the specific skills. I need customer service. What do I change so that I can enable the product and the customer to be done in, a, in an efficient way in the best way possible? Um, and if you want to think of the customer, these are the steps, you know, that I like to add to every journey. One, the goal. Uh, what is the goal? What is my customer here to do? Um, uh, what do they think and feel? So at this point, why they want to do this? Are they thinking like, is this product for real? Are they lying to me? So what are they thinking, you know? Um, uh, what's the process and the story, which this is the storyboard and the, 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 you know, you try to make it fun and engaging that this user came here and he's excited and he's looking for this and that. The emotion, it's very important. You know, we saw the wheel of emotion. It's always already important to think of every step of the way. Like when they discovered this product, what is their emotion? Are they doubtful? Are they excited? Um, uh, are they frustrated because they were struggling with something else before? So try to pin down this emotion and the problems. I like to add this at every step of the way, which is always try to think what can go wrong. You know, it's not always the ideal scenario. Try to predict what could happen wrong with your customer. And so that you think of solutions and, and, and ideas. And one thing that would be nice to have, it's a surprise effect. What can I do here at this step to surprise my customer in a positive way? So what is something they don't expect that I can give them at this point? And why do I do that? I mean, people remember products that gave them something better than what they expected, you know, or worse, but we want to focus on the better, you know? So if, if you gave them, if you gave people exactly what they wanted, they're going to be happy, but they're not going to be overly impressed. But when, if you give them something better than they expected, this is when you make them a bit, a bit happier and more, more engaged. Um, and you know, for every for every milestone, so for the discovery, let's say when they learn about your product, you fill down every all of these steps. The moment they sign in or sign up, which is the purchase, let's say, or or adoption. Also, how do they? How do you? What do you have in this in this step? And you continue for the product related um, uh, um, sections, which is touch points. What are the touch points that they're actually using? Is it social media? Is it mobile app? Is it a web page? Uh, features of interest. And at this point, you know, you want to translate this into a product, right? So at this point, with everything that you have, try to think of what could be the interesting features. And we always say no feature should be added to a product if it's not beneficial to the journey of the user. And this is how you can identify it. You know, sometimes we ideate and we say, why don't you do a feature that does this? What, what does it add value to the customer? How much does it add value to the customer? And this is how you can actually map it down to a specific goal. And here are the ideas that relate to the problem. So if something happened wrong, let's say one thing that can happen wrong, if the customer signed up and we want to verify their emails, what happens? So what happens if they didn't get the email, you know? And some ideas could be like, let's get people to sign up and, and access the platform and we'll get them to validate their email later. So there are always ideas to make their lives better. So if I'm letting people sign up with a mobile phone, what happens if they change their mobile number? I mean, a mobile number. So try to think of these at this stage. And then also very important is to think of the KPIs. How do I measure that this step is done correctly? Uh, how do I know that if I, if I want people to sign up on this page and they landed on this page, what am I measuring? So for me, it's measuring how many people signed up so that I know in every step of the way, what did I do wrong and what can I improve actually? Uh, and also how am I doing over time? Me measurement and KPIs are very important to tackle in every step of the journey. And then technology considerations. Is there anything I need to consider at this point? Anything I need to integrate with? And this is what it's important to bring on board even the technical people at this point to see the journey and get their input so that we don't have discrepancy and we don't dream when it's something that's not feasible. 
And finally, on the operation side, uh, we tackle customer service. Is there anything from the customer service? We overlook customer service and product design while it's one of the most core functionalities in a product because if something happened wrong, they're reach out, reaching out to your customer, to your service. How do they, are they able to respond to the specific milestone? So try to think of what can you do here? Anything regarding compliance and regulation, especially when it comes to FinTech and any partnerships you can do. So if I need to, sign up and I wanted to make it fast, maybe I can integrate or, in, or partner with, with existing tools. Uh, if I'm giving offers to, you know, I, people want to save money, maybe I can give them partnership and offers with other uh, like sub dealers and suppliers, you know? Um, so all of this is important to think about at this time. And, and finally processes and oper procedures, anything I can do at this point internally to change the process to map with the operation, with the product and the customer um, needs. And, you know, we're, this is how the journey looks like, but how do we start? Usually this is what we call the empathy map. It's the most fun and challenging exercise. Fun because you're actually, you know, you're trying to think of, uh, try to understand what this customer, is, who is this customer? So we try to think of what do they think and feel? What do they hear? What do they see and do? Um, uh, what say and do and what do they see and try to think of what are their pains and gains and obviously we need to do this based on proper information you can start with assumptions but this is the, this is this exercise makes us understand how much do we know our customer do we know what they're feeling do we know what keeps them up at night do we know what are their frustrations and you know you get the real feel of their words the things that they use so that you um, uh, you can tackle it in the journey uh and it's challenging because again as i said it's not easy to have these answers but as a collaborative work when you do it as a team it's much better it's much easier to to do this and it at some point after you do this you definitely have a better empathy for that human being in front of you that you're designing for and this i wanted to, to show like one example of how that you know adding empathy in a product can help us optimize so this is an example of an onboarding customer journey map of a P2P payment, payment. And I'm focusing on onboarding because onboarding is the most important. You know, When we meet each other, it's the first impression. When we download an app, it's the onboarding. How do you get to introduce that product and how do you take me in a simple journey to start using your product? Um, and here, if you know, I stopped, I start from discovery until the usage. And if you want to think of a product without empathy, this is how the process would look like, you know, the user lands on the website, checks the features, downloads the app, creates the account, sets up the account, and then do the first payment. While within this journey, so much can happen. So if we add a layer of think and feel, and we try to think of what this person is thinking, so when they land on the website, they might be thinking, does this really work? P2P payment? Can I pay to, to others with this fast? If I check the features, okay, this seems to have interesting feature. Is it expensive? When they download the, word, the app, they're like, how does it work? Okay, I wanna see like a glimpse of how this product works. When they create an account, okay, if you're asking so many things, they might think this is too long. If they're setting up the account, same thing. I don't have time for this. And when they do the payment, um, when it's time to do the payment, they might think, you know, I'm not sure. After they've done all of this, they might think, but I'm not sure I wanna do this. And this is one, if you want one aspect, this is one customer, one user, but you can do this with multiple personas and multiple users to be able to tackle the full uh, spectrum. And add another layer of try to think of what can go wrong, you know, in every step. And, you know, let's say this person uh, has a, ha hasn't, haven't used such a service before. Let's say, you know, they're not familiar with P2P payments. And also I'm gonna add the others just to make it um, uh, clear. So, and some of the ideas that you can show here, let's say demo videos, testimonials, explain how it works. So answer people's questions before they actually ask them, you know, and if you want to think of, let's say when you're creating an account and this happens a lot in, in FinTech products, you know, people download the app thinking they can use this wallet. And then they go through a process of, you know, adding their details and everything. And then we ask them, which country are you in? And when they add their country, we tell you, okay, sorry, we don't support this country, you know? And imagine the frustration, even if this product started to be supported in this country, you've already started on a bad experience with a user. And simply, if you start with it, when you think of these, you would think on a product level to add the step to the first level step, you know, and ask people, where are they from? 
and you know and some of the ideas that can happen if their country is not supported is tell them like notify me when it, like you can show them a feature to be notified when it becomes available so you actually gain the customer the moment you are launching in your country you can you have their email you can notify them so when you think of this aspect and add empathy to the level you're able to think of more creative features that tackle people's problem as opposed to just let's think of features and of course you add the emotion at the end you know what is the customer feeling at this point and how do i um how do i tackle it as well and that's a simple i mean this is so very simple because the customer journey also would look that big and this is a simple one usually the customer journey can look as big as a wall if you want to add all the steps and i always recommend that people take it and print it and keep it in front of them because the advantage of customer journeys is that you get everyone aligned you know technology with marketing with product and at every point you know that's something you keep you have to keep updating all the time but it's your it's kind of your reference you know and um and when you show it to even you know whoever you want even investors or even uh, your your marketing people or the content writing people it's a better they get a better understanding of why are we doing this you know and what's the language that we want to use with the customer and you know my some like key kind of advice that I would give you if you want to design better journeys. Um, one, research. Of course, research is the first and most important stuff because you need to understand your customers and who, what their behavior are like. And of course, you have to do customer interviews. They're important because you get to talk to the customer. But, you know, uh, sometimes um, customers tell you about the perspective of how they want to be perceived. So what's even better than customer uh, interviews is real life observations. Get your hands and go and, and sit. Try to really put yourself in the shoe of a customer. Also focus groups are helpful. And same thing, jobs to be done as a framework is very helpful because you try to think of every job that the customer needs to do to achieve a goal. And it, it allows you to reach from that to design a, a more, more ideal journey. And diary studies, that's an interesting, actually, um, practice, which we, you ask a potential customer to try to write down all their emotions when they're experiencing products. Uh, it's not easy, but when it's done, it gets you to actually, when people reflect, they can share their feelings much better. And, uh, you know, one thing I do with benchmarking is you track, check other apps. I do a lot of testing with other apps. So I take a product that's already in the market and I take it and test it with my potential customer and try to see how they experience other products to learn of, about things that not to do in my own products. And collaboration, of course, uh, one thing that's very important when you're working in a, on a, in a customer journey or any product is try to bring diverse perspectives, diverse team because you would get out of the feeling that you are not the user, you know? And the moment, um, and I always say that, like the moment you are product, designing a product, you're no longer a potential user. Uh, you, you have biases, so you need to bring in more people that can get you out of what you know, whether it's customers to test with or people within the team. And how to do that with brainstorming session with all stakeholders, developers, designers, marketing, content, include everyone. The developers are the one coding, so they need to understand who they're coding for. Um, and, and, and after also after collaboration, there's data and metrics. It's very important when you start to be able to know what do I want to measure? Let's say I launched something. How do I know if I need to improve it or not? So you need to create the right KPIs. You need to be able to predict behavior now that you're starting to, to aggregate data. And, you know, lots of things you can use, proper analytics, artificial intelligence, marketing automation to automate your process. And one last recommendation is be agile. You know, the world is changing way faster than we want. We used to say that before, but 2020 proved it to another level. Um, our behaviors are changing and we're not sure what's going to be the next trends really in, in 2021 and, and with what's happening. So be, have a team that's a bit agile to launch a feature really fast, even if this feature makes someone's life better for the next three months, but you'll be gaining them for a longer period. Um, so don't be very rigid in a roadmap. Try to be flexible based on what's happening around. Um, and, you know, kind of, few like um, uh, reasons why our, or, or what can how emotional design or empathy in design helps in customer journeys. Uh, one, it helps you build a relationship 
um, it helps customers build a relationship with the product. Remember, you don't want to be a product. You want to be something, a reference to the customers when they need to do a specific thing. So you need, you need to build the proper relationship. It creates less frustrations when people are being addressed with their feelings and their emotions. Uh, they're, they're happier, they're less frustrated, which also, uh, and also when you develop, when you know what you want to develop and you focus on the right features, you definitely reduce development costs and reduce the features that you're going to throw away because no one is using them. Um, it increases conversion. A happy customer definitely, definitely is more um, uh, uh, open to buying stuff. Um, or more stuff so it definitely increases conversion and of course engagement if i if you if you understand me as a brand i'm going to come back i'm going to engage definitely more and of course if you're if you're solving my problem and making my life better i'm going to trust you and i'm going to be loyal and if some another product c comes to to the market that does exactly the same thing i'm going to stick with you so that's why it's important to think of it this way and obviously it empowers customers um when you're giving them something good, you, you people stick with you and, and they feel good about themselves and they're solving a problem. If I'm not able to do a payment and you help me with it, you're empowering me as, as, a, as a customer. And of course, finally, uh, you minimize support. If it's easy and if it's clear and you tackle every aspect of the journey, you wouldn't need to invest a lot in customer service um, or at least you, you, you minimize the stress on customer service. Um, and with a closing point, you know, I, I would say like a product with good feature is a tool, while a product channeling the right emotion is an experience. And experiences are more memorable, you know. Uh, while good products, you know, if another product came to mind and it's actually good, um, the, the people would be looking to, to, to leave and try something else. And um, that's it. Thank you. Lara, thank you so much for the talk. The topic here just sparked such a discussion in the chat. I'm not even sure where it starts and ends. And we have some questions already. Uh, Christina asks, what are some common frameworks or methodologies that I use to translate insights as a communication tool other than journey map? Um, I mean, journey maps, uh, th there are experience maps as well, which are similar to, to journey maps, but they're more like um, uh, detailed with the steps as well with, uh, with this. Um, there are, you know, um, like there are lots of tools that we use as well if you want to enhance the journey map, which is, you know, uh, try to think of um, uh, like a, a kind of scenarios, you try to think of use cases and all of the use cases within a specific thing. Because remember, the journey map can be very high level uh, and you think of the different milestones. But if you sometimes you want to drill down into one and create the right use cases uh, with this in particular and where you create interactions with different people. So if, if, if sometimes you have different users interacting with each other, so, you know, uh, and you, you, you need to be able to channel this emotion as well with them. So that's another one that we can um, uh, use. Um, but I think there's, it's the same, it's always a journey map with different levels or different scopes uh, for, for, for this. Thank you. And we have another question from Hamid here. I guess this will be the last one and the rest will go into the breakout rooms. So Hamid asks, uh, what is your take on Blueprint compared to journey maps? When to use what? Can you name some pros and cons? Uh, so Blueprint, you mean the, the, the canvas, like the, the high level of the product, right? I mean, the, the Blueprint, it, it's not about using one or the other. You start with one and you detail it in another. So it's always good to do all of them if you have time. It's all. It's always good to do with all of them because, you know, the blueprint. Whenever you want to start with a product, you need to understand the vision. Why are we doing this? What are we trying to solve? You know. And with the journey map, you have to have this defined. Uh, so they're both very important, but they're done at different stages. Same thing. After the journey map, you need to go with wireframing and prototyping. You know, you cannot jump from one to the other. Uh, so they're both. I think they're equally important. And with the journey map, sometimes you refine that you did define your blueprint lara thank you so much for your great talk and answering all the questions we've got more of them but we will save them for the breakout room discussion so stay tuned